test number one is the test of courage it takes courage hear me the first price it takes to be a trailblazer to be consistent to weary limitations till you win is the price of courage courage is derived from conviction listen carefully courage is not outsourced it is generated one more time courage is not outsourced it is generated generated from a conviction god is speaking to someone already the lord said unto gideon the people are too many please go to verse 3 let's just stay at verse 3 god is speaking to someone now your family members they seem too many who will rise from there and break i know you come from a crown of five thousand people and just because a family meeting was held don't make a mistake of believing that everybody who came there intends to get to the other side test number one who is he that will not be fearful who is he that will not be afraid he said whosoever is fearful and afraid let him return and return early don't waste our time and the bible says twenty-two thousand people for god's sake they said gideon we are returning remember the dream god showed you i'm still returning remember you've come too far you left your house i'm, I'm still returning can i tell you many have returned in ministry many have returned in business many have returned over their health many have returned i'm here to encourage someone pass this test if it is there hold on hold on hold on before i pray for you you have to know that there are tests you must go through you may not like what i'm teaching you but if it's advancement you intend to have there is a test behind every genuine result you see is a testament of endurance and courage make no mistake to think the anointing just came and moved people uh -uh. before the anointing came you know the audacity it takes to position yourself to defy the crowd defy opinions we live in a world that does not respect the sacrifices of people the stamina and the staying power the man of god is just lucky the businessman i think he was just lucky do you know the pain and the tears nobody wins the olympic by mistake no you can get to the field by mistake please listen carefully because god is speaking to you the test of courage deuteronomy chapter 20 let's hurry up someone's life must change this night the first four verses deuteronomy 20 when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou he says be not afraid of them for the lord thy god is with thee hold on you would think that that god would take away the chariots he says i'm with you but you will still see chariots you will still see horses you will still see people more than you oh david when you see the size of goliath don't be afraid remember the one that is with you forget about the size of the adversary oh someone is ready to shake the devil will make you focus on the egyptians focus on chariots as though god were not with you he said wait well, hold on hold on look up please please settle down look at me the only way to see horses and chariots is when you go out to battle not when you stay in the courage to even go out is why you will see adversaries can i tell you there are people who it looks like they don't have challenges it's not that the devil is not attacking them is that they themselves have not even taken the first step of courage to their destiny they are how did you know there are altars fighting you is it not when you made a commitment that i will be different the altars had you 
they said we stopped your father we stopped your grandmother who is this man who is rising like a reed taken out of fire when you go out to battle it is not unusual to find forces that are greater than you no that sickness in your body those bills you stand and you make up your mind that everybody lived in a rented apartment forever but in the name of Jesus I will build and you ask how much can I buy a house and they tell you 30 million and you check your account and see that you have 4,000 you laugh at yourself feeling like a fool remember the jealousy of God is standing by you to defend you please sit down and it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle he said the priest shall approach and speak to the people we are reading to four and shall say unto them hear O covenant people ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies let not your hearts faint fear not and do not tremble neither be ye terrified of them why verse 4 for the lord your god is he that goeth before you to fight for you against your enemies and save you can i tell you ask any man of god that you respect ask your man of god coming here look look let me tell you the stories of men are the exploits of courage in the midst of pain there are people today they were told they would not survive certain things they refused that i will not die they saw death again and again i have a choice but i've made up my mind no way there are people who refuse when one door closes they don't have time morning they force another one to open listen we live in a world where people find pleasure justifying mediocrity and they sit down there and use very justifiable reasons to remain there they destroyed our house in 2007 that's why i don't have a house till now it looks like an obvious answer but it's not the right one please listen carefully god is speaking to us test number one is the test of courage someone shout and say in the name of jesus i conquer fear the fear of opinions the fear of failure the fear of the past the fear of the future turn it into prayer right now turn it into prayer right now in the name of jesus i conquer fear i conquer fear fear over my tomorrow fear over my destiny the lord is with me standing by me like a mighty terrible one In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Deuteronomy 31 let's hurry up please sit down someone's spirit is firing up this night Deuteronomy 31 from verse 6 to 8 listen by the time I'm done teaching you believe me a grace will come on your life this night you will walk out of this place knowing that you encounter the grace of God in reality be strong and of a good courage fear not nor be afraid of them for the lord thy god he it is that god goeth with you he will not fail thee nor forsake thee verse 7 we are reading to 8 and moses called out joshua and said unto him in the sight of all israel be strong and of good courage for thou must go with these people unto the land which the lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them and thou shalt cause them to inherit it verse 8 and the lord he it is that goeth before
before you he will be with you and he will not fail thee neither forsake thee fear not neither be dismayed please look up whenever God speaks to you about your future God does not talk to men like he's talking to men God talks to men like he's talking to himself hmm. one of the ways you will know is God speaking is because when God gives you a destiny instruction he will even start by saying fear not because the size of what he will tell you there is no logic and no you will feel stupid for believing in him there are many times you will regret training your ears to hear God because the excuse you would have used now you can't say it's not him that spoke to you that God speaks to you and tells you in your lifetime I will use you to build a house for all your 13 brothers and he said God don't flatter me just tell me I will succeed I will pay my school fees as at the time God is speaking you are hoping you are still 20% gathering the money for your rent I told you that God does not speak sympathizing with your current situation he speaks as touching your destiny when he finds you hiding he does not say oh thou hiding one he says oh thou man of valor the same way God is seeing someone who is weak and saying oh thou prophet do you not know that that grace and that unction of the prophetic is on you and you are saying God don't flatter me the prophetic no but everybody was an idol worship by my family the test of courage whoever is fearful go back 22,000 people sir went back let's continue Judges 6 and Judges 7 now verse 4 are you ready so the first test is the test of courage maybe i should add two or three two scriptures just to buttress on the issue of courage second timothy 1 and verse 7 very popular scripture second timothy 1 and verse 7 before we look at the second test for god had not given joshua selman the spirit of fear that means fear is a gift look up look at me That when you find fear at work in you you received it anything given can be rejected is that true the Bible said God has not given that means someone else gave it God has not given us the spirit of fear look how powerful fear is it takes three spiritual forces to dislodge fear power love and a sound mind don't downplay fear fear is the spirit that foreruns every other spirit every other spirit stands waiting for fear to open a door no spirit will enter a door that fear has not opened did you hear what i said every spirit is at the mercy of fear they wait patiently for fear to open that door then every other spirit can come god has not given us the spirit of fear let me tell you your destiny will require courage you will stand face to face before mountains you will stand face to face before some of you life-threatening issues maybe some of you are already even standing in front of those things who are down mountain you should say before Zerubbabel when that beast was roaring six fingers and six toes even the veterans of war in Israel became afraid and a young teenager who came to serve his brother's food he heard the voice of that beast and he went and stood there and he said what is happening who is this they said Goliath Goliath and he looked at him he said please give me a chance to do something to this man he went to Saul the brothers drove him and said go back before he kills you for nothing and he went to King Saul and Saul said from what tribe I want to know the covenant that backs you that's all I need to know when he stood before him with a sling 
Goliath said, am I a dog? I will kill you, but respect me. You must be such a stupid boy. You come to me with a sling. Look at your warriors. You've been, you've been a shepherd with sheep. Your veterans are afraid. And when he was done talking, you would think that David would kneel down and say, I'm sorry, I'm just a teenager. David said, let me even tell you how you would die. This sling will bring you down. Your very sword is what I will use to remove your head. Ah, goodness. Courage. Can I tell you this? Some of you, after this conference, you may not have money to buy sharp sand, but go and stand where that land is. Hear me. You may not have a ministry now and nobody is placing a demand on you. But go to the bush where your audience is. Stand there and hold a stick. And begin to preach like I did many years ago. And decree and declare by the spirit. Sense the anointing there. Train your gifts in the bush. Train your anointing right there. Because sooner or later. The one who is a way maker. Will make the way for you. Can I tell you this? Fear puts men in bondage. Hebrews 2.15, I believe. And to deliver them who through the fear of death. 2.15 Hebrews. Where all their lifetime. That means fear can capture a man's lifetime. Do you know what a lifetime is? From when you were born till when you die. Fear can literally possess a man's lifetime. Not just moments in your destiny. A whole lifetime. Courageous people are those who win in our world today. Those who are overly conscious of what people say. I made a statement. Who liked it? Who commended it? You, you are ready for failure forever. There are times you will have to stand alone. Can I tell you something? You see, the ways of God does not always show the wisdom behind it immediately there are times that you will look foolish for 10 years is the 11th year that will show you were wise for 11 years but the courage to stay when Noah was shouting and saying rain is coming hear me rain is coming for 120 years he was shouting they laughed at him he said I'm giving you a chance all the animals were wise they didn't argue as soon as they got the call in peace seven by seven two by two the animals who could run faster than men who could climb trees who were even more technical they quietly came and all the men who were helpless they stood there arguing it was god who closed the door and the bible says the rain was structured such that heaven gave its own rain earth gave its own rain what whoever it meets in the middle and that was where it killed everybody can I tell you this? Most of us in our world will never be great because of the fear of being alone. There are people who will leave God a thousand times to gain friends. There are people who will abort their destiny a thousand times because of acceptance. Our, our generation has such an obsession for acceptance. Don't get me wrong acceptance is one of the psychological indices that make for fulfillment i understand but let me tell you sincerely if it is destiny there are many times is at the end that the vision speaks but you don't start building at the end you start building alone foolishly sometimes and as your wisdom unfolds god now honors you Once upon a time in this Lagos, there were people who were tying water. Is that true? Water like what you call pure water today. They were tying it in a leather. You still remember? And someone looked and said, no, water is an essential. We can package this in, in, a, in a more intelligent way. Do you know the risk it took? What if they failed? Question, did they fail? The man who builds a hotel with 130 rooms question 
who signed that I will come and sleep in your hotel? The pastor who buys a land and builds a church. Did anybody sign a covenant with him that I will guarantee you midweek I am there. Church service I am there. Somebody say courage. courage. My dear worshippers, when you write your songs, does anybody give you any guarantee that I will come and sing? Everything you are celebrating today is the other side of courage. The other side of courage. The other side of courage. Seven up. You know seven up that you take? I'm sure you know how the name seven up came. Seven up just means six down, seven up. The man failed six times. Woefully. He named that product after his results. Today you drink it. But behind what you are drinking is the pain of a man. Look at me. I always wondered why God through the prophet would tell Naaman to go and bath seven times. God, you are mighty. What is seven? I later found out that is, there is something about the law of process that was taught in that miracle. Do you know that after Naaman took his bath six times, you thought there would be evidence of cure to encourage him. He was still as dirty and scaly and as tattered as that. Five minutes to your miracle, it will still not look like it. This is the thing about God that you have to understand. <laughs> Can I tell you this? Go and ask Elijah. He prayed and said, check for me. Nothing. Prayed and said, check for me. Nothing. Seven times. Even the sixth time, nothing. The same way you are seated today. You don't know it's tomorrow that prophecy has written. That you will be smiling as it is right now. Nothing is in your life. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. The prophet said, By this time tomorrow, you thought a cloud would suddenly start moving, and the nation of Israel said, Wow, a cloud is forming. After the prophet spoke, I'm sure even him, he went back and said, God, I've spoken. Don't let these people kill me. A woman that can eat her child, is it a prophet she will not eat? By the next day, everybody woke up. Where is that stupid prophet? Playing with our intelligence in the name of the Lord. You said today, this is that day. They forgot it was God that made the day. Four lepers. Why sit we here and die? Let's go and die in the place where there is plenty. There's a lesson there. It's better to die in a place of supply than to run away out of fear. The, the guys were wise. They said anyway we are going to die. So it's wiser and cheaper. And when they took that step of faith, the Lord amplified them and it was like the sound of chariots. And they said, ah, Samaria has now gathered allies to come and fight us. When they got there, all they saw was supplies. Can I tell you this? Someone by this teaching, you are receiving the courage to do something that four years ago, you wrote it, God told you, start. You've been afraid and sitting there. Go and register the company. Oh God, you know the way Nigeria is now. I'm waiting until my uncle, he said he's contesting for election. Woe to him who puts his strength in a man. If God gives you the marching order, sustain the courage and the grace to go. Can I tell you, sometimes you will fail obeying God. Oh, I wish you would not. There are times you will fail obeying God. When you fail obeying God, allow the one who takes the glory to also take the shame. You've always heard me say this. If you are the one taking the shame, you have been taking the glory too. It's a deal. Whoever takes, when you say God, take everything. You mean take both the glory and the shame. If on account of my hearing you, this shame comes upon me, take responsibility for my obedience.
Please sit down. Let me give us.